This is the fallacy of power. Ultimately, it is effective only in an absolute, a limited universe. But the basic lesson of our relativistic universe is that things change. Any power must always meet a greater power. Paul Moadib taught this lesson to the Sardaukar on the plains of Arakeen. His descendants have yet to learn the lesson for themselves. During the course of the Dune Saga, a mysterious figure called the Preacher appears from the desert of Arrakis, bearing several warning messages for the inhabitants of the Imperium. His sermons outline a warning to humanity that is echoed and woven throughout Frank Herbert's Legendarium. In this video, I'd like to discuss the arrival of the Preacher and how his message warned of humanity's nearly unavoidable demise. Spoiler warning if you are unfamiliar with the Dune series. Some nine years after Paul Atreides disappeared into the desert and was presumed by many to be dead, the Atreides Empire stood under the regency of the Emperor's sister Aaliyah. Decades had passed since the outbreak of Moadib's Jihad, a bloody interstellar religious conquest resulting in the death of billions, all in the name of Paul Atreides. However, the Fremen that carried out this jihad were beginning to soften as the world of Arrakis was undergoing a slow transformation from a brutal, unforgiving hellscape into their long-awaited paradise. This is the stage upon which the mysterious figure who called himself the Preacher appeared. This lean, leathery, and grizzled man was blind, with black eye sockets and scarring consistent with injuries inflicted by a stone burner weapon. He spoke in a forceful manner that demanded a response from his listeners, similar to the Bene Gesserit's power of the voice. All of these factors, along with the absence of Moadib's body, led many to speculate whether this was indeed the lost emperor, Paul Atreides. What seeded doubt for some, however, was the fact that this preacher was led by a young Fremen boy who served as his guide. They reasoned that the all-seeing prescience of the Emperor would eliminate the need for such assistance. However, this guide was an intentional misdirect to maintain doubt and anonymity. The same can be said of the Preacher's cloth mask that was falsely claimed to be an Ixian artifact enabling him to see with his skin. The truth, that this preacher was in fact Paul Atreides, would need to be hidden so that his messages would remain separate and undistorted by the myth and legend of Moadib. Paul's first objective as the preacher was to weaken the strength of the religion which had grown up around him. During his rise to power and time as emperor, myths and legends had been promulgated attributing magic and mysticism to Moadib on a level far beyond his prescience. The preacher spoke against these myths, recalling his own words as emperor in an effort to tear down such illusions. Initially, his message was largely directed at the Fremen who had been fundamentally transformed by the religion of Moadib. He implored them to return to their original faith, which was focused on the lessons of survival in their struggle to live in the deep desert of Arrakis. In the years following his ascent to the Golden Lion Throne, the Fremen had been led astray in an idolatrous quest for imperial domination which had robbed them of their soul. After publicly delivering several messages to his closest friends and family, Paul called out the priesthood of Moadib, who carried on in their practice of the ecumenism of the sword. Their continued existence was deemed blasphemous due to their abandonment of Moadib and their self-deceiving holiness, being driven by vengeance over love. The Fremen's misguided ideology led them to favor short-term expediency as they were caught up with reckless abandon in their religious fervor. This left them ignorant and blind to the long-term consequences of the Jihad and their continued struggle to maintain power. As the preacher pointed out, any power must always meet a greater power, which highlighted a fundamental lesson of their relativistic universe, namely, that things change. Therefore, it can be said that the Fremen, through their institutionalized religion, had once again begun the cycle of falling into the downward spiral of stagnation, which had plagued the Imperium long before the days of Paul Atreides. The pre-Jihad Fremen had adapted to their environment. 
They joined and flowed with it. They changed with it. But now, they had abandoned those old ways of adaptation and instead became focused on maintaining stability, desiring to reside safely within the stable they had built, abandoning the spirit that once motivated them to run as free, independent creatures. As the preacher pointed out, the religion of Mu'adib was rapidly moving the Fremen-dominated Imperium toward cowardice, mediocrity, inertia, and self-satisfaction, hastening their almost inevitable demise. While many took this message to be a direct attack on the credibility of Mu'adib, the preacher denied such an intent. Instead, he pointed out the evils of the false religion upon which the priesthood had denigrated and fattened itself, committing atrocities in the holy name of their god. Paul then implored his listeners to abandon their focus on always choosing the certain and steady course, referring to his own example of choosing to confront the ultimate uncertainty of the larger universe as he stepped off blindly into the desert from his supreme position on Arrakis. To the industrial elements of the Imperium, the preacher gave an additional warning against favoring a chain of command and commercial organizations over the quality of individuals that are responsible for making great civilizations work. The powers of the Imperium had a tendency to over-organize and over-legalize the humans under their authority as they suppressed the individual's urge to pursue greatness. This, the preacher asserted, would also lead to the inevitable collapse of their civilization. By refusing to journey into the visions of his future, Paul had abandoned the course that would have led to the Golden Path. He found what he saw of that future to be too terrible to accept. Be that as it may, through his sermons Paul remained determined to guide humanity in whatever manner he could to help them avoid the pit of stagnation and their subsequent destruction. It was instead his son, Leto II, who took up the responsibility of guiding humanity toward the Golden Path. In their initial conversations, Paul begged Leto to turn away from that commitment, hoping for a better future for his son. Though the preacher, Paul, sought to appeal through the power of his voice to his many misled followers, Leto recognized these sermons would not be enough. Instead, the lessons of the preacher would be materialized as they were taught through thousands of years of tyrannical peace enforced by the god emperor's many evil acts of violence and suppression. Paul was eventually made to see the necessity of that terrible future and how it would ultimately lead to humanity's survival. After accepting the vision to which Leto had clung, the preacher resolved to complete the destruction of the hero Moadib. In his final appearance in Arakeen, Paul the Preacher emulated John the Baptist as he directly quoted the words of that ancient Bible character along with other passages from the Book of Revelation. With this sermon, it's apparent that Paul realized his role as one who would pave the way for the ascendancy of his son as emperor who would ultimately lead humanity to its salvation. Then, by condemning his sister Elia's blasphemy, Paul provoked the temple priests who swiftly reacted and put him to death. Only then was it widely recognized that this was in fact Moadib, who had been executed at the hands of his own worshippers. As expected, the martyrdom of Paul Atreides and the enshrining of his body then served to facilitate Leto's rise to power as the god emperor. While the preacher's words had faithfully warned the masses of the terrible fate for the future of the Imperium, Leto took it upon himself to make the most brutal version of that future a reality, to mercilessly dominate the social, political, and religious elements of the Empire for thousands of years as he painstakingly demonstrated the lessons of the preacher, enforcing and cementing the spiral of stagnation they had been warned against. This tyranny would produce within humans an innate determination and a fierce desire to think for themselves, to a poor cowardice and mediocrity, to steer away from the pursuit of self-satisfaction and the tendency to focus on sheltered safety. These are the same lessons found in the sermons of the preacher, which, through the god emperor, would be forever remembered by the generations of humanity's future. But I'm curious to know what do you think of the preacher's message? 
Are there any particular lessons or principles contained within his words that stand out to you? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe for more Dune and other sci-fi and fantasy news and lore. Thank you all so much for your support, and as always, have a very nerdy day.